All right, guys, and welcome back to another episode of For the Thrill Sports Cards and Memorabilia. My name is Braden, and on today's segment of Memorabilia Monday, what we're going to be talking about is authenticating your memorabilia. This is something that could be very important in the sell of your memorabilia and verifying your memorabilia. Let's go ahead and get into it today. <laughs> Alright guys, so what I'd like to talk about today is the authenticating process and, and what companies to go look for and what, what they have to offer. So what I'd like to talk about first is the authentication of things that were not witnessed by the authentication company. Now this is something that they will receive and this, this is their opinion on the validity of the signature. So I got a few few examples of, of things that have been authenticated. So right here, I have a baseball signed by George Foster, inscribed NL MVP 1977. And this one was authenticated by a company named called JSA. All right, so JSA received this item, looked at the autograph, and, verif and verified that, in their opinion, that this was authentic. You can tell that this is opinion because right here, it starts with JJ. All right, that, that is their code for the verific verification of something that they've received and did not witness. Now to speak about JSA and their their witnessing, I have a ball here signed by Wilson Contreras, and again this is authenticated by JSA, but the code at the beginning is WPP, which stands for Witnessed Protection Program. This is their way of saying. We witnessed this item being signed. We can verify the validity of this item because we saw it being signed. This is authentic because it was done in our presence. All right. And then another company is a company called PSA. All right. And then so here. We have a ball signed by Chris Chambliss inscribed with the NLCS walk-off home run. Here, this one is authenticated by a company called PSA DNA. Now PSA, this one as well was sent into PSA and they looked it over and in their opinion, they decided that this was authentic. This was not done in their presence, so they can't guarantee that it was authentic because they didn't see it. But looking at the data and all, comparing it to other autographs and everything, they decided that this is authentic. Now here, you see the code and the, the sticker. I can tell that this was not witnessed by the, the code and the sticker. To give an example of the PSA being witnessed, I have this mini helmet here, signed by Kyle Van Noy, and on the back here, it's PSA and it says in the presence. So this one was done in the presence of a PSA official, and they saw it happen, and so they can say without a shadow of the doubt that Kyle Van Noy autographed this, and we, we witnessed it, this was authentic, and with all of these, they, they do have a number corresponding with the item that you could look up on their, their websites, and these, I, these numbers verify what the item is, so when you look it up, you can say, oh yeah, that is the Kyle Van Noy mini helmet that, that was signed. I have a validity that this is the same item that they witnessed and that we we have the the corresponding information another company that that does authentication that that is trusted is Beckett now 
What I have here is an Edward Howard the fourth signed mini helmet. And this authentication was done by Beckett. And Beckett, when they authenticate, they'll put a put a B for Beckett when it's not witness, but here it's got the W as a sign for witness as well as it says Beckett witnessed. So these this is a way of of seeing that this item was witnessed by Beckett. Um, I do not have an item that shows the the Beckett not witnessed, so I can't show you the difference there, but like I said, it will usually start with just a B instead of the WB. You know, and again, this was something that they witnessed, this is something they saw, and so they can verify authentically that this was the exact item that this person signed. So when it comes to these authentication services, I would recommend that you do your research and find which one um, is the most valid for you, the one that you trust the most. Me personally, I like go. I like stuff that comes from PSA. Uh, with my research, that's the one that I trust the most. It's the one that that I like. And then, but some people like the JSA. Uh, in my opinion, that's number two. And a lot of people like the Beckett. I do acknowledge that they, they are a good company and uh, have some validity to them. But in my personal opinion, if I was to send anything off to get authenticated, I would go through PSA, and if they're not available, I'd go JSA and then to Beckett. But if you were to get anything authenticated, go ahead, do your research, look at pricing, see what you feel comfortable with, and get authenticated with who you feel is the right fit for you. Another way of authentication is there are a few companies that that are with high reputation that only do in-person signings. They will not take anything in to verify offhand. Everything that they put their sticker on is something that they witnessed in their own facility. So one of the companies that, that many people may recognize is Fanatics. So right here I have a Jerry Rice signed football. And on the back side I have the authentication sticker by Fanatics. So this was witnessed by Fanatics. This item was sent into Fanatics. This was something that Jerry Rice had in his hands at Fanatics and they verified that this is the item. A lot of companies to correlate with their authentication, the number on the item correlates to a card that they provide as well. But, but Fanatics, they're, they're a little bit different. They will not provide a card. They will put their sticker on there and then they would, you can look it up on their, their service and verify that it is the same item that was autographed and that it is authentic. Another company that is reputable is a company called Radke Sports. So here, I have a Steve Young signed uh, replica helmet. And on the back side here, you have the authentication sticker um, from Radke with their, their number. Now they go ahead and send out the certificate of authenticity, authenticity but this one does not correlate with a number. You have to go to their website to verify the item with the number. But something that they do that most companies don't is they take a picture of the items being uh, autographed as another form of authenticity. It shows Steve Young here with a whole bunch of helmets that he was autographing. This one might not be the exact one, but you can see that he was autographing a bunch of helmets and, and that he was there and that they were ver they could verify that he was signing all those those helmets. And then another company that does authentication is uh, only in their facility is a company called Schwartz Sports. So here I have a Mark Brunel signed football. And the, here is the 
the sticker of authenticity and like light ratke they'll send out a card but it does not have the number that corresponds with the number that's on the item it just directs you to their website where you can verify the item with the number again they are saying that mark brunel was in their facility doing the autographs and they put their sticker on there verifying that this is authentic so those are the companies that do authentication uh, when it comes to the the items being authenticated like i said i go i prefer psa but when it comes to items that come from a facility that was done in house i personally like the the fanatics i just like the look of their 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 sticker of authenticity i also just know the name and feel that that they are a reputable company but again going through Radke or Schwartz Sports doesn't take away from their validity. Me personally, I just like the right name recognition of Fanatics. Again, you can go through and look look at the companies, do your own research, find which ones you find to be reputable or find the ones that you find to be the best fit for you. And you can go ahead you can go ahead and just purchase the items with what you find to be the the most reasonable and authentic for for you. These are some of the companies that are the most reputable in in that type of authenticity. So go ahead and do your research. You know whatever you feel comfortable when you go to buy your memorabilia. You know don't buy something that you don't feel comfortable with. I would recommend that you buy only things that are verified by these these companies there are some other companies that do in-house authentication such as Steiner Sports you know there are some companies that I do not have anything from that are very reputable you just do your research when you're going through but if it's not one of these these companies that that I've mentioned again do your research and and I would recommend that you just try to get the the companies that are highly reputable because a lot of these companies that don't have this reputation are known for passing off fakes and not having the validity of of the not having the validity of the other companies and so a lot of people won't go through and buy those items just because they don't have that recognition they don't have that rapport that that these other companies do have Alright guys, that's going to do it for this episode of For the Thrill Sports Cards and Memorabilia. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you found this information to be useful. Hope that you can use this information when you go to purchase items in the future, that you can feel safe and sure that your items are valid. Go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed this content, and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when videos are uploaded. Guys, remember to stay amazing. Live life to the fullest, be true to yourself, and I'll see you guys next time.